I'm here with author Maria V. Snyder, and you just wrote an absolutely wonderful young adult novel, Inside Out. Yes. And I don't know exactly genre-wise what to call it, because there's actually some spoiler. There's, there's a little bit of a mystery going on, um, and, and I feel that, that if we label it wrong, it might give away the mystery. So do we just call it dystopian fantasy, I guess? Yes, or science fiction. Dystopian science fiction works, too. Uh, anyone who liked the Hunger Games sort of has that same kind of feel. I call it Logan's Run meets City of Ember. Oh, I like that. But you have to have read both the book and seen the <laughs> 70s movie with Michael York, you know, and the cheesy 70s <laughs> thing. But that's, that's how I describe it to people. Is that how you came up with the idea? Is, is kind of a, a, you know, amalgam of all these other things? Or I, was it entirely new? It was a dream. Really? I dreamt it. I dreamt the characters. I dreamt the setting. Even, like, the bad, the protagonist, the antagonist. It was, everything was in a dream. And um, I woke up and I wrote it all down, so before I could forget it. Well, let's let's talk a little bit about the plot. So we have okay. Trella, mm -hmm. and she is she's the main the main heroine, right? And um, she's not how do I, she's not very easy to like. No. Is that is that a good way to say it? <laughs> she's she's a little bit she's very standoffish. Now she lives in kind of an unusual world, right? Because she lives um, in this giant commune um, underground and there's just thousands of, of people or inside I should say not they're, underground. they're in, inside. inside and you don't know they're underground you don't know you that. just know that they're inside they're inside just and they're, like a big metal cube <laughs> and, they're, and they're trapped there's there's yes. no way out mm -hmm. um, and there's just thousands and thousands and that really bothers her she doesn't like right. being enclosed right well she doesn't like being around so many people she'd rather be off by herself and so she, she goes into the air shafts to clean them because that's part of the world. And, and she just stays there because she prefers it. Exactly. Yes. And, and she, doesn't, she doesn't have a lot of friends. Now, in this world, you don't really have familial ties. You don't know your last name. You don't know your birth parents. Right. Was that a difficult thing? To, you know, you have a family. So was it kind yes. of hard to wrap your head around cutting those ties? Uh, no, I don't think so because it made it easier, less complicated for her. She didn't have, like, a mother yelling at her or, uh, you know, a sister wondering where she was. It was pretty much you're on your own. And um, kind of like, and also the other world, you know, the uppers, they have the family ties, and they have the structure, you know, th th that. So it was sort of like, you know, the grass is always greener. I mean, this is something that they would want or she would want to. So that's, that's how it worked out. I didn't, I don't know, I didn't have any trouble with that. <laughs> So th they live in this very, um, you know, like I said, dystopian mm -hmm. world where they're controlled all of the time. There's giant clocks on the wall to tell them, you know, and they've got mm -hmm. their schedules and it's very regimented and there's just a lot of rules. Right. That's kind of, I would imagine, the ultimate teen nightmare. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. That's probably what my son's probably thinking. Yeah, that, that sounds like my life. What's so wrong about that? <laughs> 